Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and today I have a bit of a different video for you. I was sent the Xtool M1 laser and blade cutting machine by the wonderful people over at Xtool and in this video I will be creating a Nightmare Before Christmas book nook with this tool. This machine is easy to operate, it comes with an exhaust pipe that you can lead through an open window so you have not too many fumes in the room you're using the machine in. Unlike many other laser machines, this machine has a built-in blade that can cut as well. It is a bit like a Cricut. It comes with a cutting mat as well and that can be used inside the machine with the blade setting so you can cut paper, leather, vinyl and a whole bunch of other materials as well. Besides the machine, they have also sent me a large pack of various materials I can use with the machine, which is great for trying out materials. If you would like to order your own Xtool M1 machine, there is a special link in the description box below, including a discount code. The machine is great for making personalized gifts for Christmas and Halloween and Thanksgiving. And for me personally, it will be a great help in my craft room for upcoming projects and perhaps some products in my online store darkestravendesigns.com in the future. I thought the first project should not be too complicated so I can test out and try the machine out as I've never worked with a laser cutter before. I bought the design for this book nook on Etsy and I will leave a link down below if you would like to download your own for your own machine if you already have one and it was easy to use with the Xtool Creative Space software. Because I live in Australia, these kind of book nooks are not readily available in store, so I have to make my own, and with this new machine I can make them in any size I like. The material I used here is 3mm MDF board. I cut out some tombstones to go in the book nook, as it will tie in with the scene I have in mind. I'm also going to use this resin printed Jack Skellington to complete the diorama, which was sent to me by one of my channel members. First, let's start by painting the entire box black. I'm also painting the tombstones black. Later on, I'll make them grey by dry brushing grey and white paint over them. I created these chipboard circles to go on the outside of the book nook. I laser engraved the letters and then laser cut the circle with the X-Tool machine. Now it's time to paint Jack, and whilst I do that, let me tell you a little bit more about the movie The Nightmare Before Christmas. Wary of the same Halloween routine, Jack Skellington, a pumpkin king of Halloween Town, mistakenly wanders into Christmas Town. He likes what he sees so much that he tries to bring Christmas joy, trees, presents, carols, and Sandy Claus to Halloween Town, with nightmarish results. And this really is a Disney movie. Although the movie is created as a touchstone movie, touchstone is simply a label that Disney uses for their movies that are considered too scary or too adult for little children. It took a group of around 100 people three years to complete this movie. For one second of film, up to 12 stop motion moves had to be made. In the scenes with the street band, especially inside the town hall, there is a small man inside the base that is based on Danny Elfman. Oogie Boogie was originally intended to be Dr. Finkelstein in disguise. Reportedly, Tim Burton was so infuriated by this idea that he literally kicked a hole in the wall. The character of Dr. Finkelstein is listed only as evil scientist in the cast credits. In the original poem written by Tim Burton, the only characters that existed were Jack, Zero and Santa. All the other characters were made up for the movies, although he describes some of the presents were giving out, including in some cases the names of the children. There are four shots in the entire film that were filmed at normal speed, which is 24 frames per second. One is the opening overhead shot of the trees in the forest, the fog coming out of the fountain, the liquid pouring through the holes of Sally's spoon, and the other is the bugs falling into the molten pit in Oogie Boogie's lair. Here are the painted and finished tombstones and also the painted Jack Skellington. I did those pinstripes with a white gel pen and then did a clear matte 
spray paint over the top of that. This circle is going to be the moon and of course we need an Oogie Boogie, so I painted Oogie Boogie in the moon. I wanted to incorporate some lights, so I drilled a hole in the back of the pumpkin, string some lights and make that come out of the back of the pumpkin and painted the string black so you can't see that in the diorama and the rest of the lights are going to sit in the ceiling. Now I'm going to glue Jack inside the box and then decorate the rest of the box. I have attached the lights to the ceiling with hot glue and now I'm going over the strings of the lights so you can't really see them and just see the lights from the ceiling. And when you're looking at the diorama when it's inside the bookcase you can't even see the lights but just the glow that comes from the ceiling. Getting onto some final parts now of the diorama. I'm spreading PVA glue, just simple PVA school glue on the whole base of the diorama and also around the stand where Jack is standing on and going to spread that out with a paintbrush. This is some dried rooibos tea and I picked this one because it looks like fall colors and I'm going to spread that all over that wet glue base so it covers the entire floor and we have a nice base to work on. I then gently pat it down, tip out the excess tea and let it dry. I have some plastic faux leaves that I'm going to apply with hot glue just on top of the dried tea. I am going to put a blob of hot glue inside the diorama and just putting the faux leaves on top. With some Fabri-Tac glue, I prefer to use this for moss, I'm going to apply tufts of moss as well to the forest floor. Um, I thought this would tie in with the whole scene as well. And then of course we cannot forget about the tombstones. I'm putting them into the diorama with hot glue tilting them slightly backwards so they have a more natural position inside the diorama. And this is it for this video. I absolutely love the X2 M1 machine and I had fun creating this diorama knowing that some of the work would be easier for me to do. If you would like to get your own laser and blade cutting machine, don't forget to check out the link and the discount code in the description box below. It is a limited time offer, so jump in whilst it lasts. Thanks again to the people at Xtool for sending me this machine to try out. All my social media can be found in the description box below and if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!